not good, that's going to give me a clockwise five to six. Seven to eight clockwise, ten to thirteen clockwise, and clockwise. We're going to have to find a different route, Bill. This is ridiculous. Every morning. Look at them. Biting their hands that feed them. Don't they realize that the people sitting in this traffic are just trying to get to work? Where do they think that social security comes from? I mean, look at those two. What are they doing with their lives? They're better off joining the brigade. Who's up there? Seemed rather familiar. I've got to say, Bert, you've done a brilliant job with these signs, man. Oh, well, it does the trick, don't you think? It draws the eye. Yeah, but then it looks to be a shunt in a minute. Mind you, that will be you in a minute, though, Bert, if you don't want to be late for work. Nah, Bert's all right. You got your bike, ain't you, Bert? Uh, well, I'm not today, actually, no. Had to come in the car with all these signs to carry. Oh, yeah. But you'll be back later tonight, yeah? To see the plans? Yeah, this is Hamilton's alternative route. Got your arguments figured out for the planners yet, Bert? Yeah, well, I'm going to tell them we don't want the road at all. But if they absolutely insist, then there is the alternative route, which diverts around the woods, through the disused industrial area. Yeah. Atta boy! Get <laughs> get him! <laughs> By some fat on the radio, I love you, my dear. They haven't said to each other for 20 years, I love you, my brother. I love you, my darling. I should tell the news, say the lights are back up uh, on the A3. Oh, look at that. Two double yoke takes. Yeah. Look at that. What? Three of them. Three double yoke takes in a row. What's the chances of that happening? Cyril! Get your arms down here! It's odd though, isn't it? It's like they're twins or something. And how often do you get twins? Here. It's a bloke downstairs says he's got a delivery of marital aids. Perry, go downstairs and open the door for him, darling, and sign for him. Good lad. So, anything weird happened today? Any disasters? Friday the 13th. Ominous. Things happen. Oh, yeah. Something will happen to you, you keep reading my newspaper. I just cracked three double yoked eggs in a row. How's that? That's weird. No, that is weird. What am I telling you, George? There's plenty more where that came from. Shut up, Cyril. Weird. You're weird. Oh, thanks very much. That's nice. Coming from a guest in my house. Your house. This is the upstairs flat of Vic's sex shop. He lets my sister stay here, not you. Vic's all right about Cyril staying here now, as long as he helps out with a gay chat line. Hi, I was meaning to talk to you about that. I'm not entirely... Shut up, Cyril. But I'm the one with the house in a cul-de-sac, nice garden, three-piece suite, and a mortgage. All right, you have. Haven't you? Yes, I have. And maybe it's time I went there. What about your egg? Split it between you. Divorce? I don't divorce, Jack. It's just Lil winding you up. Kelly doesn't want to divorce, she just wants to make you suffer for a while. Why should I suffer? She's the one who had the affair, not me. Women's logic, George. If a man has an affair, it's because he's a pig. If a woman has an affair, it's because the man's such a pig, she has a right to. You can't win. So Kelly's affair and all what happened before, 
That's my fault. In her eyes, and Lil's, yeah. If you'd have been a better husband, she wouldn't have been tempted. Isn't it marvellous, eh? Mind you, fair. More of a leg over, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, that makes it all right, does it? Not really. But take the modern view, George. Women can have the odd bit of extra marital, and though we may not approve, we can forgive them. Men have been campaigning for that for years. Now, if we offer them that concession, they got to do the same in return. So what are you saying? I'm saying that if you want her back, then go and apologise for making such a fuss and forgive her for getting her end away in Spain. Oh, you've changed your tune, haven't you? Anyway, I can't. It's against my nature. I'd do it if I were you, before she goes back to Spain with what's her name. If she does that, it changes everything. She ain't going to Spain. You said she was. Yeah, that's before I went round there and nicked her passport, though. <laughs> 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 Now, this is peaceful. I could live with this. What? Shh. All right. Oh, no Billy. Sort of eerie tranquility, isn't there? Almost transcendental. <laughs> what do you say? They expect the diversion to be in force for the rest of today. Finally, there's a visit booked for D.O. Chapman at 10.15. Watch detail, Gov. Thanks, Sub. A deal Chapman will be bringing down a researcher or someone. Cool. No, it's not another change of uniforms. They want to try a, a new siren on the pump ladder. There'll be a mechanic down from uh, workshops as well. Uh, doubtless, uh, he'll also want to discuss the centenary event with Firefighter Mackenzie. Carry on, sir. Blue watch. Blue watch, shut. Fire duties fall out. So, Rico, how's it all going? What we got to do? Here he wants you to sing, doesn't he? Yeah? What you do I represent? The swinging 60s? No, the Great Depression. To be honest, I'm sick of the old bloody thing. I wish I'd never been volunteered. Jeff, if dear Chapman wants to mess with the appliances, you better give them a quick ballot. Right, what's up? I think you should pull out and we'll cancel the whole thing. There's nothing to celebrate here. The station is a hundred years old, Jack. Oh, big deal. We're just hanging on by the skin of our teeth. If there are any more brigade budget cuts, we'll be the first to go, centenary or not. Yeah, well, our new masters have no respect for the status quo. Quite honestly, Rico, I don't know how you can waste your time pissing about with some parade or whatever when the brigade are trying to get rid of all the sub-officers. That's not quite true, actually. You're the union rep. You should be fighting for us. Unions should get their finger out. But how do we know it's such a bad thing? Well, it's good for you. But if it's good for you, it usually means it's bad for the rest of us. Thank you, Bert. That's very nice. It's a bad thing, Jeff, because for purely cost-cutting reasons, they're trying to take away our sub. And I, for one, don't really want to see her go. I thought I might do a Thai red curry for lunch. Ooh! Lo Min used to cook lovely Thai food. I met him when I was in Bangkok, searching for Albie. He's a lovely boy, so kind. Wonderful with his hands. He came back and stayed with me for a while. Oh, yeah? Yeah, then he and his family moved to Holland. They run a dry cleaning business in Arnhem. Governor's bird might have used them. Well, yeah, she's always very smartly turned out. Very clean. Talking about me again? No, talking about the governor's what's it, girlfriend. I don't know why he doesn't marry her and have done with it. Well, he's certainly lightened up since she's been around. Just been at hysteria level 15 instead of his usual 20. <laughs> Well, you see, Jack, in some cases, regular sex is a common influence. But in others, it causes nothing but trouble. Oh, Carol, if you're going to get smutty, go downstairs. Fair enough, Max. But I got a card from Billy this morning in the post. Billy can write. Oh, looks lovely. Oh, Jack, you read it. I haven't got me glasses. Dear all, flight not bad, but delayed. Hotel OK, nice pool, grub OK, not being sick yet. Not exactly Judith Chalmers, is he? <laughs> Beach not bad, totally standards good to high. Met two birds from Doncaster and... And? Uh, and, uh, yesterday was overcast. Love to everyone, not you, Jeff. Might be back soon or maybe not, who knows? And then there's a cross. I suppose that's how he signs his name. What does he mean? He might not be back. Oh, you can't blame him, Max. I'll get it. Oh, 
see what he's got to say then, Bert. Here you go. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, a message has just come through. The pump's been ordered to stand by at Upham. Uh, yeah, there. It seems they're on an eight pump exercise with a debrief to follow. It's going to take most of the day. Why else go? It's miles away. Yeah, well, uh, apparently the local pump they would have sent has broken down, so. Great. Well, there goes lunch. I'll make us something to take with us then. Of course, there is the point, sir, that the old Chapman's coming to fit this new siren. Presumably the pump ladder will have to be taken off the run for that. Yeah, I'm aware of that, thanks, Jeff. Um, why don't you go and remind control about the standby? Sir. Seems daft to me. Uh -huh. Why don't you stay here and tell them to send someone else to? Where is it? Up em? Maggie, there's no use trying to apply logic to it. Sadly, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you better get going. Uh, you're due there at 10 o'clock. I can't believe this. what I tell you? Friday the 13th. The whole town's gone on this exercise. Either that, or we've passed through a time warp into a parallel universe. Yeah, yeah, that'll be it. It's a commuter town, isn't it? They've all been the city. Yeah, but it's a real happening place at weekends. <laughs> nah. They're out there somewhere, watching, waiting, just not showing themselves. Yet. Yeah, well, let's get inside, shall we? You want to book us in, Greg? I'll check out the mess. Oh, it's up. Yeah, I'm yeah, fine. Oh, no, it's a dump. Won't be a long way. Oh, it's up. Morning, Mick. Morning, sir. How are you, sir? Morning, Mr. Pierce. Nick, that's Miss Hoddle from Leeds University. She's been developing a new type of siren. The chief's interested, wants to try it out on one of our appliances. How long will it take to fit? You have to take the pump ladder off the run. Half an hour should do it. Ah. Could I have a word, sir? Come on, you two. <clears throat> Morning. Need to be to Pierce. The thing is, uh, we've only got the pump ladder on the run. The others are out on standby. It's a bind I was having to get away. Where's the pump? On standby, up and... Oh, right. I'm afraid. They sent the cook home, and they've locked up the milk. We get some when we go out, yeah? Think so. So, you know this thing about them moving you to take charge at another station? Uh-huh. When's it gonna happen? I don't know. A couple of weeks, I should think. Do you know where you're going? Yeah, I do. And you're not gonna believe this. They're sending me here. I'll take those. So, what's different about this siren, Miss Huddle? Well, it's called the localizer, and it actually lets you know which direction it's coming from. So, other road users are less confused when they hear an appliance approaching. Um, that means they can get out of its way much more effectively. And we reckon it could cut your journey times by up to 8%. But it will be genuinely quieter, though, won't yeah, it? Yeah, the volume's been reduced, which means it's much, much quieter in the car. Thank God for that. The damage it must have done to my ears. What about the damage you've done to our ears? 
Yeah, the sirens you've got at the moment are so loud it's really difficult to work out where they're coming from. The new one uses uh, an intermittent tone to alert you and then a burst of multi-frequency or white noise to help pinpoint the direction. Blimey. What does it sound like? Uh, rather like a flatulent walrus. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. And Blackwall, ever in the vanguard of progress and innovation, has been chosen to test it. Uh, this wouldn't have anything to do with the bloke across the road in the new flats there. The one who's been complaining about the noise from the sirens. Ever the cynic. It helps save lives, sir. I'm all for it. Uh, what does this uh, test involve? I'm sorry, uh, Fiona Hoddle, Station Officer Georgiadis. Pleased to meet you. Well, apart from the siren, uh, I'll also fit a small video camera in the windscreen to record the reaction of other motorists. Just one point. The noise from the siren comes straight out in front, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is great. Except for the people in the flats there. They get the noise coming straight at them, don't they? tested this siren on dogs? Uh, not as such. Why? Well, they, of course, can hear much higher frequencies than we can, hence the uh, dog whistle. And since part of the siren is a burst of multi-frequency white noise, one imagines that our four-legged friends will react to the higher frequencies. Oh, I'm sure they will. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. No, it'd just be interesting to see whether animals can distinguish between a fire engine and, um, an ambulance. Vernon. Excuse me, Miss Huddle. I, um, I was just wondering if you'd heard any more from your ex-wife. Not in person, thank heavens, although, uh... Somebody did hang a dead raven off the wing mirror of my van. Thought that bore her trademark. Yes. You don't think she'd come after me, do you? Or recall? Who can predict the workings of a tortured mind, Geoffrey? Hmm? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, I couldn't have a chat with you, could I, sir? Yeah, of course. About the centenary event, is it? Yeah, well, it is, sort of. But look, sir, I hate to say this, but there doesn't seem to be much enthusiasm for it. I see. Well, it's going to cost the brigade some money, so, uh, I mean... Well, to be honest, sir, if the brigade is determined to push through this rank restructuring, I don't think anyone's going to be prepared to celebrate anything. Didn't realise you were also attached to your sub-officers. Yeah, well, we do get attached to them, sir. And in Blue Watch's case, we're still getting over the loss of our last one. Yeah, of course. Well, it's not just that. It's the principle of the thing. And as union rep, I feel I should be devoting my energies to fighting that and not organise something that nobody wants for a station that you're probably going to close down anyway. So how long have you known? Got a letter from personnel a couple of weeks ago. Who else have you told? The governor, Chapman, and my friend Katie. Pierce has been sniffing around, of course. Do you want us to keep it to ourselves? No, I don't know. Had to be sooner or later. Was well, there anything you can do? Well, the governor had a word with Chapman to see if he could pull any strings. But the best he could come up with was health and safety. Well, that's not so bad, is it? It's got to be better than this place. Yeah, that Davis bloke's all right, isn't he? I couldn't go back to a desk job. Not after being on the road. So that's it, then, is it? You either take over here or what? Quit the brigade? Looks like it. I'm not coming back here, sir. I know this place is a dump, but, you know... I'm not coming back here, George. End of story. Oh, it's not a shout, is it? No, they'll have about one a year. Oh, that's not fair. It's a shout. Person stuck in lift home with your state. Where the hell's that?
we get it in without moving the lift? Let's have a look. Yeah, here's near the doors. Better check the other shaft. Oh. Is this stuck and all? Yeah. Yeah, looks like it's on the fourth floor. Right. Near upstairs and under the doors. So. You all right? Can we help you out? Oh, thanks. I must have been in there at least 20 minutes. It's always happened to me. I live on the sixth floor. These lifts will be the bane of my life. You're not going to be out of action for a while yet, mate. I want to go to the uh, fourth floor. I've been stuck in here for more than 20 minutes. What? I said I've been stuck in here for more than 20 minutes. But what's going on? How'd you do that? I'm sorry? I just got to have a lift. How'd you get in there? Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. I'm confused now. Well, I'm a bit stuck in here, so if you wouldn't mind. Mind you. What is this? Is this a wind-up? No, of course not. Ah, I know. You think that you've just pulled me out of the other lift? Yeah. I think we'd better go down and have a look, hadn't we? How come? What are you doing here? I came over to see Mum. I thought I'd pop round and see if you wanted to come along with me. That's where I was going anyway. I'll drive you over then. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a bloody big coincidence. I mean, identical twins stuck in the lift at exactly the same time. One going up and one coming down. Yeah, I suppose so. Things like that happen all the time in our lives. It doesn't surprise us anymore. What well, surprised me, I can tell you that. But you thought you'd seen double A, George. I've had that since you gave up boxing. <laughs> Thanks anyway. See ya. See ya. See ya. I've got to admit, that was a weird one. What'd I tell you? It's Friday the 13th. Do 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 Grass fire, new step way on Charlton's ground. I know that. It's right on Charlton Common. Well then, Miss Hubbard, this is your big moment. Sir. Don't forget your seatbelt now. So what is it with this place, then? You really don't like it here, do you? <laughs> I can understand you're not wanting to be posted here, but you're behaving like, I don't know, it's haunted or something. In a way, I suppose it is for me. You've been here before, then? Yeah. Eight years ago, I spent my probationary period over at Charter Hill. So I used to come here on standbys. And what? Something went wrong. This isn't where you met Martin, is it? No. That came later, in my second station. <laughs> Although that wasn't a bad guess. Yeah, another in my long line of disasters. So what happened to you then? <sighs> Nothing. 
I've never told anybody about it. Well, anybody in the brigade. If I tell you, Jack, you've got to promise me you won't say or do anything about it. Ever. Sure? <laughs> no. Say it with a bit of conviction, because I really mean it. All right, I promise. Recall is here on the right. This is your protest camp, isn't it, Bert? All your environmentalist chums. Well, it's the site of one of the protests, yes. I think the smoke's coming from over there. It'll take us to your leader. Oh, God. It's a bit embarrassing for me, I mean, being here in an official capacity. You're supposed to be protecting the woodlands. And if there's a fire? Well, yeah, I know, but I mean, they like fires all the time. It's probably just some busybody. Couldn't we send Jeff on ahead? No, we couldn't. Come on, you're wasting time. Oh, uh, would you care to accompany us, Miss Hoddle? Uh, no, I think I'll just stay here, catch up on my notes. Thanks. Right off. Lots of things happened, Jack. Like I said, my own station was terrified of upsetting me. I didn't seem to bother them here. They said and did whatever they felt like. Didn't your own watch stand up for you? There was one of them who was worse than the rest. He's a vicious bastard. He must have hated women. I know he hated me. Like I said, lots of incidents happened here. The worst actually happened at my own station. But it involved him. He cornered me one night in the office. It was all over me. It had nothing to do with sex. It was just a power thing. With the word of this, your career will be over before it's even started. I managed to fight him off and well. That was it. Off he went. What did you do? Nothing. I never said a word. Are you crazy? If you'd reported it, he'd been out of the brigade. Yeah. But I just couldn't face going through all that. But that's assault. They'd have had him for it. I know that now, but I was on probation. I was new to the brigade. I didn't believe it would have been sorted. Don't give me a hard time over this, Jack. I feel guilty enough. If I'd have made a fuss, it would have foiled me for the rest of my career. In fact, I doubt I would have stayed in the brigade. No. I kept quiet, I got on with the job, and I'm doing all right. So far. I just never expected to be sent back here. So what happened to him? Is he still in the brigade? Who knows? So he could still be at this station, for all you know. Let's find out, shall we? What's his name? Jack, you promised me you wouldn't say or do anything about him. So why do you need to know his name?
It is you, I said it was. <laughs> hey, cool outfit, man. <laughs> oh, hiya, Bert. Mwah. Oh, you brought some of your mates to meet us. Well, actually, we were called out. Somebody reported a grass fire. Oh, right. Um, well, nobody here been burning grass, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I said it was probably just one of the campfires. Quite harmless. Well, what happens is, people around here don't like us much, so to cause as much bother as they can, they phone in these false alarms. Yeah, I mean, we get the local crews around here every, uh, every other day or so. I mean, it's terrible, really. It takes them away from doing really useful stuff, like helping old ladies down from trees and that. <laughs> I've heard Charlton's been out here all the time. Heartly sick of it. <laughs> oh, so are we, man, believe me. Well, there's a simple answer to that, isn't there? Yes. Why don't you uh, scout around, see if you can find a grass fire somewhere? Sir. God, Bert, you must be boiling in that get-up. Why don't you take your jacket off, Ed? No. <laughs> you want to smoke? No, I don't. <laughs> Not when he's on duty. Isn't that right, Bert? Uh, the thing is, um... Oh, uh, Holly and, uh, <coughs> Squirrel. Uh, Holly, Squirrel. I'm afraid we're going to have to put the fire out. You know, it only takes a spark and, uh, it could get out of hand. Oh, but we're hitting our water on that, man. It's our bath night. Yeah, it's the only way we can get a bath nowadays. Look, supposing it does spread, if they find out we were in did nothing about it, we'll be in trouble, especially Bert. The whole planet's in trouble, brother. That's why we're here. I mean, when you think about what they're going to do to this woodland, a little fire doesn't seem that serious, does it? Yeah, all right, you can keep the fire, but uh, we'll have to get a hose reel out and soak all around it, OK? And in future, put it out in the open and make sure that you clear the bracken from around it. Good on you, man. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, recall, uh, run out of hose reel and uh, Jeff, your man, will you? No, sir, if you don't mind me saying so. I do mind, all right? So just get on with it and bring a shovel for sick note. You can clear up round here. Sir. It's good to see that not all uniforms turn people into fascists, see? <laughs> you just caught him on a good day. <laughs> Look, I've got something to show you. The plan from Mrs. Hamilton. The alternative route for the road. The one the council squished at the inquiry. Oh, yeah, right, I want that. Squashed. Anyway, just like she said, it runs through a built up area, but mostly they'd just be widening an existing road. And the only buildings they'd have to demolish are these few industrial buildings, yeah. I mean, look, the nearest houses are what? 100 yards away? So this is the route we've got to go all out for. Yeah. George! What I found? Who are you? Go on, give it a press. Oh, oh well, nice try. Fuse is gone. Typical of this dump. Video's gone in the uh, restroom and all. It must be the break for the whole circuit. Mm -hmm. Have a look. Circuit had been removed. That's more promising. Car alike, Bagshaw Street car park. <laughs> Where's Jack and Dora? Probably behind the bike sheds.
typical bloody vandals. It's full of surprises, isn't it? What? Let's get on with it. Why not, mate? Danny? Right, Greg. Yeah, man with a mission. George? Poor boy. Over here, son. It's not both ways, mate. Go on. Can cross code, remember? Atta boy. <laughs> Go, son. One Gregory. One. Give us some more. Come on. Talk to it. Yeah, yeah. Dano, Dano. Pick a door, pick a door, any door. Go on, son. Don't have to kill, mate. Don't worry. Go on, jump on it. Get his doors locked. Got the three amigos here. Chippy on that parade beyond the station. I'll swing round and we'll get something, yeah? Oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And get some drinks and all. Oh, my God. Bloody hell. Get your sets on. That'll set fire to it. Oi! Mate! What have you done to my station? 
We were out on the show, and when we got back, the whole of that side was on fire. Bloody hell. What about the host door? Yeah, that went and all. <laughs> Jungle Jim will be pleased. He had his motorbike in there. Any idea how he started? Not really, no. It could be electrical. Yeah, well, the whole place needs rewiring. The White Watch, come to think of it, had a problem with the fuse box last night. Well, it shouldn't be that, though, because they pulled the breaker out. Right. The uh, spark never turned up then. Well, I'd better go and see what's left of it. He was in charge of you dozy buggers then. Sub Officer Webb. Jack, leave Carl it. Carl Webb. Well, I never. Sub Officer Webb, I should say. Now, you might not like this station, but you didn't have to try and burn it down. You've obviously still got your razor sharp sense of humor, Dalton. And you obviously still haven't got one. Anyway, what you doing back on the run? Last I heard, you'd packed it up for a job at health and safety. Because I wasn't suited to active service, or because I couldn't handle the pressure. <laughs> well, thanks for your concern. But despite all the efforts of you and your mates here, I'm doing all right. Yeah, I can see that. Sub-officer now. Giving the orders. How do your chaps take to that? They take to it like intelligent, mature professionals. I wonder how you take to it. Well, not very well. But unfortunately, I don't have to, because I'm a sub and all. Temporary sub. You assaulted me. It was virtually attempted rape. You do remember. I didn't assault you. Oh, come on. It's just a bit of fun, that's all. I was pissed. Just mucking about. I know where I was, Dalton. I've always known. And I've never said anything. If I had, you wouldn't have just been out of the brigade. You'd have been nicked. So what? You smug bitch. What you gonna do? Report me? But now, eight years later... No, I've just decided what I'm going to do. What I should have done all those years ago when I first joined the brigade. I'm going to take you on. What the hell's that supposed to mean? Take me on? Well, I don't know if the news has filtered this low down in the food chain, but the brigade's moving existing subs to take over one of Pine stations, like this one. So I get to my notification a couple of weeks ago, and guess where they're sending me? What? Well, wouldn't... <laughs> You're kidding. I'm going to be your new boss. Don't talk crap. It's true. Of course, when I first heard about it, I tried everything I could to get out of it. I even thought of leaving the brigade. But now that I'm here and I've seen you again, I've realised you're no threat to me. No, oh, yeah. I'm not going to run away anymore. I'm going to take over here and I'm going to sort you out and all your little cronies. Yeah? You reckon? Will you just do that, sweetheart? I look forward to it. We'll see how long you last. If I use this, I'll they want a word. Is that him? The bloke you're talking about? Him? Nah, he's no one. He couldn't have some fun. No, never mind him, Theo. Keep going. For a minute, Theo. Keep going. Ah, do you mind? I'm trying to take a lesson. I've told you not to interrupt. Well, I'm sorry, but this is urgent. Look at this. Oh, I don't want to hear about your bloody road protest or those smelly hippies. Oh, really? Well, you're going to want to hear about this. You know that alternative route that we're proposing? The one that avoids the woods and goes through the direct industrial area? Well, they gave me this plan today. It's the one we're offering to the planners as the only acceptable route. Well, what am I meant to be looking at? You're looking at the new road, which goes down here, and our house, which is here. What? But that's practically at the end of our garden. Mm hmm. It's about a hundred yards away. Look, you see, this route loops down through here, along the perimeter of the woods, and then it goes straight through those old workshops down there. But they can't do that. They can't build it at the end of our garden. And you 
can't propose it. Are you mad? Well, I didn't know anything about it before today, did I? That Holly said it went south of the woods. Well, it doesn't. It goes north. Well, he's so spaced out, he doesn't know what day of the week it is. Never mind north and south. But, Jean, he's been to the house before. You'd think he'd know, wouldn't you? He knows nothing. That girl would have tweaked it, though, little minx. Ah, oh, well done, Bert. Nice one. Jean, I wasn't to know. Well, there's no way we're having that at the bottom of the garden. The noise, the pollution. And that's just while they're building it. And think what it's going to do to our property value. I know. Don't get worked up about it, all right? Got to think very calmly about how I'm going to handle this. I mean, it could be very awkward. I'll tell you how you're going to handle it. It's not awkward at all. First of all, you can stop queening around with those long-haired layabouts up there, and then you can start campaigning to get that road built straight through the middle of the woods. What? What are you doing here then, George? Come to get a change of underwear? I've had enough, Kel. I want to come home. Oh? And what's brought this on? Beatty chuck you out, did she? No. I miss you. I love you, Kel. And the kids. I don't want us to break up. So what'd you say? You've been horrid to me. Yeah, I know, yeah. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Please. Hey. Okay. 